David Williams here. In a previous video, I talked about using parity for error detection. Now, in this video, I want to look at some of the details of how the transmit side determines what the parity bit should be by using a par parity generator logic block. So, to start off, let's look at a brute force truth table method for designing a 3 bit even parity system. So, in a 3 bit parity system, you will have Three, you will group your data in three bits. Let's just look, call them A, B, and C. And based on the values of those A, B, and C bits, you're going to generate a parity bit of some value. And in this case, we're going to generate an even parity bit. So let's call this P even. Now we need to come up with all the possible combinations of the inputs. So with A, B, and C, we have 0, 0, 0 as one combination. So there's all the possible combinations of inputs. Now based on the based on each one of these combinations of inputs, we can determine what the even parity bit should be. So if we have all zeros at the inputs, in order to have an even number of ones, the parity bit needs to be a one. Now with one one, the parity bit needs to be a one to make two an even number of ones. So one's there. And here we already have two ones, so we need a zero for the parity bit. We have one one, so we need a one for the parity bit. We have two ones there, so we need a zero. And here we need a zero, and here we need a one. Now the standard method for design in this brute force method is build up the truth table, and then based on the truth table, come up with a Boolean algebra expression from this truth table. To come up with this Boolean algebra expression, let's use a Carnot map. So we're going to take, we're going to go from that truth table to a Carnot map. So do A here and B, C here. So A can be a 0 or a 1. And the combination of B, C can be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, or 1, 0. So each one of these locations, each one of these squares in this Carnot map corresponds to one of the rows in the truth table. So the 0, 0, 0 location is a 0, 0, 0, 1 is a 1, 0, 1, 1 is a 0, 0, 1, 0 is a 1, 1, 0, 0 is a 1, 1, 0, 1 is a 0, 1, 1, 1 is a 1, and 1, 1, 0 is a 0. So in this Carnot map, we have no groupings larger than size 1. So it looks like we would have an expression, an SLP expression that has four product terms in it. But if you think a little bit closer, a little bit harder about this, what this actually is, this truth table actually represents the XOR expression. So that even parity bit is actually equal to A XOR with B XOR with C, which could be implemented with a logic circuit like this. AB as inputs to a two input XOR gate. And then the output of that XOR gate then gets XORed with the C input to give you the parity bit. So with a 3-bit even parity system, we can implement, we can determine the parity bit by passing the three input bits through XOR gates like, like we've shown here. So recall with, with the determining the parity bit, what we're doing is we're figuring out how many ones are in in a, a grouping of, of, of bits. And if you think about it a little bit more, what we're actually doing is we're adding each one of the bits together. So in this row, it's 0 plus 0 plus 0 to give you 0. And any time that you're adding a, a number of indiv individual bits, if you're disregarding the, the, if you disregard the carry out, then if the number of ones in the addition or the number of ones in the inputs is even, the sum is going to be a zero. And if the number of ones is odd, the sum is going to be one. And the summing of bits can be implemented using XOR gates regardless of the number of bits. So regardless of what the system is, whether it's a three bit system like we see here or a four bit system or a seven bit system or eight bit system or whatever, the logic circuit can be implemented with XOR gates. 
and if we assume that our building block for these parity generators is an XOR gate, a two input XOR gate, we can we can build we can build our parity generator from cascading multiple XOR gates together. So if we have the the three bit system like we saw before, we saw what that how that could be built. If we have a four bit system with A, B, C, and D. Can pass A and B through an XOR gate, and then C and D through another XOR gate, and then these XOR, the outputs of these XOR gates gets passed through another XOR gate to give you the even parity bit for a four-bit system. An eight-bit system can also be be built from from XOR gates. give you the even parity bit for a for an 8-bit system. A 7-bit system could be designed similarly. And there would be the logic circuit for a 7-bit parity system, even parity system. If you're doing odd parity, then you can use the same logic block but just with an inverter from the even parity bit pass it pass this through an inverter give you an odd parity bit. An odd parity is the op opposite of even parity. You can even design a system that has a select bit to determine whether you want to generate even parity or odd parity. So let's say we have the output of one of the even parity generators that we've generated above. We've got this even bit and then we have this odd even selector which is just a bit that is a one Sorry, it's a zero if it's even, and is a one if it's odd. So we've got these two inputs: the odd, the the even parity bit, and this odd even selector. And we have these different possible combinations of these two bits. And those two bits are going to determine what the parity bit that you're actually going to use is. So. If the odd even selector is a zero, we're going to do even parity, so we're just going to use the even parity bit there. So we're going to have a zero there and a one here. And if the odd even selector is a one, we're going to it's going to be odd parity, which will be the opposite of that even parity bit. If the even parity bit is a zero, the parity bit used will be a one, and if the even parity bit is a one, the parity bit used will be a zero. And you can see from this tr this truth table that. This is simply an XOR gate where you're XORing, XORing the even parity bit with the odd even selector. And this allows you to choose whether you're going to use even parity or odd parity. So I hope you learned something about parity generation in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.